You can customize your eye tracking settings in Eurotruck Simulator 2. Enable the eye tracking here. Check the timestamp in description and jump to a certain setting if you like. The extended view is a combination of head tracking and gaze tracking. You can see the angles applied to the game camera by your head pose and your eye gaze. In direct mode, those are added together that the head pose and the eye gaze directly affect the camera. This is recommended if you like to play in a normal cockpit situation. In dynamic mode, the eye gaze is scaled up based on how big the head movement is. You'll have to actually turn your head to make your gaze more effective to a camera. This is recommended when you like your view to be absolutely centered. Enable auto center to let the in-game camera slowly recenter as you change your head's position. You could also enable this to let your head's actual position affect the in-game camera's position. And if you tilt your head, the in-game camera will tilt accordingly as well. Let's see how it works. Now let's see how we adjust the gaze tracking settings. The gaze view responsiveness determines how fast the in-game camera will respond to your gaze. Let's put it to 10%. As you can see here, it delays a little bit before the in-game camera follows my gaze movement. responsiveness becomes much faster if I put it to 100%. The in-game camera follows immediately as I move my gaze around. Next, let's look at gaze tracking speed. It decides how fast the in-game camera turns towards your gaze. Let's put it to 1. The speed of the in-game camera moving towards my gaze point is slow, but if we put it to 10, moving speed becomes quite fast. The gaze tracking exponent controls how gradually the speed ramps up. The higher it is, the more obviously you can feel the in-game camera speeds up and then slows down. It is fast in the beginning that the in-game camera turns towards my gaze point. Then it slows down when it finally turns to reach the point I look. Let's try to put it to 1. It will produce a constant speed. That means the speed doesn't ramp gradually, but with the same speed towards my gaze point. The gaze tracking inflection point determines how far you look away from the center that the in-game camera will stop speeding up. See if we put it to zero, the camera never stops accelerating. There is no inflection point here, so the speed never levels out. Let's put it to one and you'll see now the distance isn't even long enough to accelerate. But when I look further, it starts to speed up and then level out when my gaze reaches the distance I set.
This means how far from the center you have to look before the camera starts move in game. See, when I put it to zero, the in-game camera can be easily triggered, even if I'm looking to the point close to the center. On the contrary, if I put a number higher, I'll have to look further from the center to get it move. The gaze tracking endpoint is the distance before the in-game camera reaches its maximum speed. Check this out. When I minimize the number of the endpoint, it goes to its maximum speed, no matter how close to the center I look. But if I put it to maximum, I will have to look further from the center to make it reach the highest speed. See? If the gaze point is close to the center, the camera moves slower. The wider the angle is, the more the camera can turn when you look to the edge of the screen. I'm not turning my head, but my gaze is staying at the edge of the screen. This is useful when you don't want to turn your head. If I put it to 25 degrees, the in-game camera stops right there no matter how I try to look further. Let's look at the head tracking settings. It determines how quickly the in-game camera will start to move after your head movements. Let's put it to 10% and see how it turns out. With low responsiveness, the in-game camera delayed after I have already turned my head. game camera sticks to my head movements right away when it responds 100%. The head tracking ratio decides how much the in-game camera will turn when you turn your head. As you can see, the in-game camera is limited even though I have turned my head quite a lot. With my head turning the same angle, the in-game camera moves further when putting it to 10. Make changes to this setting will let the speed ramp up gradually. This is how it works as the constant speed when pulling it to 1. But when it comes to 5, it speeds up gradually with your head movements. This means, if I turn my head over a certain amount, the camera speed will start to level out. In the demo, I put the exponent high to make it suddenly accelerate, that you'll see the difference. Now I didn't reach the point, so the acceleration does not even start. And now my head movement has reached the point. 
so it's certainly a salary and then level out. Let's see that again. See if I put the number lower, it accelerate rapidly and soon level out with my slightly head movements. Put the start point at zero, then basically the camera sticks to your slight head movement. If I put the number higher, I will have to rotate more to turn the camera. The end point determines how much your head has to rotate to reach the maximum camera rotation. Put it to 0.5, then I can easily reach its limit with my head turning slightly. And if I put it to 1, I will have to rotate twice more to reach the camera limit. You can multiply your yaw and pitch axis by raising the value of these two. So, that's all for the head tracking settings. You can find the timestamp in the description if you wish to review some certain setting. The eye tracking also supports auto pause and the hot keys that even makes it more convenient. Well, enjoy the game!